And all those guys seem to talk like this. Yeah, it's with the rat-a-tat-tat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to talk like this in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, you look really good, kid. Here, this yeah. is going to be ready to race in a couple of weeks. Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where dapper guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with Terry O'Quinn. Terry, hi. Hi. Let's see what's on. You ready? Oh, absolutely. All right. Holy Lord. So this is one of your first films. My very first your film. Your very first film. And it was yeah. one of the most expensive movies ever made. That's not a bad way to start. Uh, well, it wasn't my money that was made it that busted the... <laughs> Busted United Artists. I think it was Chris Christopherson's horse. They were paying the horse more than they were me. Speaking of horses, you you seem to know your way around a horse, but that wasn't always the case, right? They asked me, they said, uh, we're going to casting as a cavalry officer. He said, can you ride? And I said, well, of course I can ride. Of course I can, of course I can dance. And of course, and, and uh, I was doing a play in Baltimore at the time. It was a Shakespeare play, and uh, my stage manager was taking riding lessons. Uh, outside of town, so I went up to take lessons, and that was in May. They said I was going to shoot in June, and uh, so I started taking lessons from this girl out at this farm. In June, they said July, my my play closed, and so I kept on uh, taking lessons. And, and in July, they said August, and then I was out of money, and I asked her father if I could live with the grooms and muck out stalls, right. and so I could keep riding while I didn't want to give up the job. And I didn't shoot it until September. And uh, then I got came back and got married to the, to the girl. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So you got the job and the girl. Yeah, I did. I did. And nice. you know, both were overpriced. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next clip, shall we? Yeah, right, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh man. I thought Lawrence Olivia would do that, and I wanted to do it. <laughs> he did it, I think, yeah. And I forget what it was. Marathon Man. Wow. But, um, oh, he's dying. i got to be respectful. <laughs> yeah. So people raved about your performance in this film when it came out, and Roger Ebert called it wonderful. I mean, yeah. it was your first time really leading a movie, right? It was, it was, I might, might be my only time leading it, but anyway, it was, yeah, it was certainly the first time. I didn't know if it was going to be just horrible and embarrassing or not, and, uh, but a lot of people seem to dig it. I watch it now and it looks terribly corny to me, but people seem to still dig it. So. People really still dig it. The next year or two, I said, hey, we need, we need a really crazy person to stab people and kill people and do all this nonsense, and I, I kind of had to watch out for only doing that. Really? Um, so and you even almost got typecast as the crazed killer? <laughs> the crazed killer. Hey, that's a lane. And even to this day, probably the residual for the rest of my career, it's been you're just untrustworthy. You're not necessarily crazy, but we don't really believe you. So I said, okay, that's cool. Next. Excuse me, Wyatt, do you have a moment? Oh. Mm -hmm. Tombstone. So you're in a scene with Bill Paxton, Kurt Russell, Sam Elliott. I, was this movie as fun to make as it looked? <laughs> it, was good. it was a lot of fun to make, actually. I, I wasn't deeply imagine. I wasn't deeply involved. It was pretty dapper there, too. Yeah. Dapper cap. Nice hat. The funny thing was there were so many stars in this movie, so many recognizable people. I mean, that uh, everybody was called. It was kind of like a shotgun call. They would just call everybody to, to work. So we'd all drive out to the location. And then you kind of go get made up or sit, and then you kind of be talk with somebody. You go, if you don't have any lines in the scene, you go like, you're going to go in, or you want, you're going to go, you're going to be in this? And go like, oh, they'll never miss me if I don't. <laughs> so I just, I'm just going to sit in the trailer and take a nap. And uh, there would be, they would be, have the scene in the saloon, and they would have to have, they'd have somebody at the piano. You know, they'd have a piano player like you do in a saloon. But he wasn't really a piano player, and he wasn't really playing music. Um, so they wanted to play music so that it would be lively. So you're walking down and you're walking the saloon and they're blasting the werewolves of London. <laughs> and it was so great. There's all these cowboys and drunks and old dancing girls and they're playing now. Ooh, werewolves of London. <laughs> werewolves of London again. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <That's> so random. <laughs> So I read that all the mustaches in the movie are all real. Is that right? Oh, I believe okay. so, yeah. And yours? I don't know. I didn't inspect all of them, but I know that the, the main mustaches were real. Okay. Welcome back to Couch Surfing. I'm still here with Terry O'Quinn. Terry, 
Shall we continue? Please. All right. We need to talk about the past two years. As you may be aware, Mr. Kendall, I have no recollection of that time. I know you don't. Isn't she a doll? She's just I adorable. Oh, uh, yeah. I just loved her. She was such a sweetheart. And is it still, I'm sure. I haven't seen her since those I days. Know what but happened to you, Sydney. Jennifer Garner. I know the whole story. This made her a household name, also made J.J. Abrams a household name. I believe this was sort of like his big breakout thing, wasn't it? Was there anything? I don't know. Yeah. Did you have an immediate rapport with him? No, uh, because I hardly ever saw him. I did oh. with her, and that was a I lovely cast. Mm. It was a lovely cast, all of them. If you're a guest on a TV because show, you don't get make much money too. for the, being a guest. You, you don't? Know. No, you might make a fifth or a tenth of what some of the regular cast is making. But the cast went to... Uh, JJ and said, or went to the network and said, we need to make Terry a regular. He's on here all the time, and this is ridiculous. And he's, you know, he's, he's carrying a lot of, he's delivering a lot of information, and he's carrying a lot of the show. And they said, well, we can't do it. And JJ came to me and said, we, they can't do it. They won't do it. But I promise you that I will find you something, that we're going to do something together in the not-too-distant future. And? And it might show up any moment here. I don't know what you I guys have. It, but. <laughs> I think it will. I think it will. Aha! So J.J. Abrams, unlike many in Hollywood, kept his promise. Mm. And he gave me the best job I've ever had. I mean, this is one of your most oh, iconic God. roles. Yeah. This is so funny because Ben comes in. He's a good friend now, Michael Emerson, of all those folks. I'm hanging myself, and he comes in and convinces me not to hang myself, and then he proceeds to strangle me. <laughs> when you read that in the script, what goes through your mind? This will be fun. This will be fun. Okay. That's what goes through my mind. <laughs> okay. This will be fun. And it's pretty brutal. It, it's really well shot. So fans were utterly obsessed with this show, and exactly they still where, debate its final season as lost resident man of faith. Do you believe it stuck the landing, is, uh, or did it crash and burn? Uh, uh, quite honestly, I think they're both about the same. Mm. <laughs> you know, some people might have thought it was great. Some people were dissatisfied. I think a lot of people were going to be dissatisfied, almost no matter what they did. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not exactly sure what they did, but... Um, it was brilliant. I think the writing was brilliant. I was disappointed it was over. I could have done another bit of that. I had a great time with those people. And we were in Hawaii, and I know. it was pretty wonderful. I didn't go to Hooters. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Skittles? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a call from Lanetti. He tells me that your Sunshine Square proposal is totally This is uh, old school. Old school, and... Uh, <laughs> It was, I didn't even, I worked like two days. They called me up and said, hey, can you do a couple days in this and can you play this role? And I said, sure. So and had you wanted to do a big comedy like this before? I would always do it. I, well, of course, it would be lovely to do a big comedy. And I, ne I never get called on to do them because, you know, it's that whole that stepfather residue is still sticking to me. So, so they called and said, can you play this? I said, sure, okay. And um, they said, okay, my agent called and started saying, like, well, you know, what about billing? And, you know, that's part of the things they negotiate. You know, and I said, I, you know, I don't care about it. I said, um, you know, give me $500 extra. Don't put my name on it at all. And they said, really? I said, yeah, just leave it off. It'll be a surprise. And I kind of forgot about it. And so and until I went to the movie with my two sons. And, uh, what they went did your my, son say? said, holy sh**, that, that looks like dad. He looks like that. That's, that's dad. Why didn't you tell us you were going to be in this movie? And I said, I, it was kind of a surprise. That was, is the best surprise. surprise to me too. Oh, next up. He's smoking on the weed again. I know. You know? You know he was smoking on it again? Yeah. Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. She's a sweetheart. She was a, a nice surprise to come on to uh, Patriot. Of all yeah. the things I've done, I don't think I ever had a better time than working on this show. Really? Yeah. Why have you enjoyed it so much? Well, I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's brilliantly written. Um, Steve Conrad. He wrote every word. He directed every scene. He cut it all together. He wrote all the original music that's in the show. I didn't realize and, that. And he was kind of doing this sort of all at the same time. And... Uh, and he, and among his many gifts, one is apparently casting just a bunch of sweetheart. How is he? 
actors and creating the most positive work environment I've ever been in. The happiest set I've ever gone to. And you play a spy who also happens to be the father of a spy, but it yeah. isn't your typical Bond thriller at all. In fact, it's <laughs> completely unconventional, which I'm assuming was part of the appeal when you first read the script. Well, it was, yeah, absolutely. It was very dark, um, but very funny. But very funny. Uh, and so it's just so smart, you know. Uh, and, and the way it's shot, I think, is remarkable. Mm. It's, the cinematography is amazing. They'll do shots that are just funny in themselves. The shot's funny. Right. You know, they'll ha if I could just work with these people for the next uh, decade or so, I'd be very happy. I could probably put my feet up and relax after that. Well, speaking of happy, I've been so happy to have you here on this couch. Thank you so much. I enjoyed myself very Yay. much. Hey, thanks for surfing by. Season two of Patriot Streams on Amazon Prime Video starting November 9th. See you next week on Couch Surfing. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.